Welcome back to the Donovan Podcast. I know I haven't recorded in a while because obviously I've been busy, but like if I was to come back, I had to come back in a way that I personally felt special. And the guest I have, I mean, he needs no introduction, but in case you've lived under a rock for probably the last God knows how many years, I have the one and only Mark Broski. <laughs> NATO! <laughs> <laughs> thanks man thanks finally Abby bro like it's been I mean this has been overdue to be honest yeah it's been a long time it has been bro how are you doing now I'm okay man how you doing bro I'm good blessed, to see man. you I know it's been a minute it's good to see you in one place bro at least at you know least, before I travel again. before you travel again <laughs> how is family first of all family's fantastic man know, bro. family's fantastic um yeah, it's one of those things you look, you, you you look you look towards you know every day keeps you moving, fam. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, bro. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions, but me, I want to just start like yeah. a casual conversation, just based mm-hmm. off you as a human. Because for me, yeah. the premise of my podcast isn't really objectifying people to the things they've done, mm-hmm. but more about finding the character behind the person, mm-hmm. you know, as they have evolved in yeah, their journey. Really dope. Yeah, it's thanks, dope, man. bro. I just want to make sure this mic is catching the oil real quick. Uh-huh. I think it should be good. It should be good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, well, I'll keep on your name. Yeah. So you need to like talk yeah. to me first of all, yeah. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Yeah. How did you grow up? Yeah. And what inspired you to get into this music thing? <laughs> like, obviously, you started with music. So. Y- yeah. Well, to be honest, did I really start with music. I don't know. Okay. Um, talk to well, me. okay. So, I was born in Houston, Texas. Um, I lived there for maybe about a year or so, mm. two, three years, and then I moved to London. Mm. Um, we lived in Hampstead. Okay. For a couple, North. Oh, yeah. North yeah North that's Hampstead, my name. Yeah. I live in Edgeway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, not, not too far. Well, you know, Hampstead is more is closer to like Swiss Cottage, St. John's yeah. Road, Kinney. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was there for like a couple of years, and we moved to Nigeria. Mm. My parents used to live in, uh, in the East, yeah. used to live in Enugu. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, so yeah, we lived in Enugu, um, and then eventually moved to Oweri, because hmm. my old man, that's where my old man's actually from, that's where we're from actually, okay. you know, um, so we moved moved out there, and uh, from Oweri I moved to Lagos um, for secondary school, so I went to Atlantic Hall. Yeah, man, from Lagos, went to uh, New York uni from new york i went to washington dc uni and came back to nigeria um kind of started like my music career took a break went to went to dundee to do my masters um they came back we started my music career and you know um in between i think i was in abuja for some time okay and then now i'm in lagos so We've been on a, a world tour. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, bro, let, let's let's yeah. let's go back a bit, right? Yeah. You schooled, so you went to Dundee, <coughs> yeah. and then moved for back to Niger for your yeah. masters, right? Yeah. yeah. And then moved back to Niger. Because one of the things people like famously know you for is you mm-hmm. could obviously be saying only MC with an MSc, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Which, which was cool, right? Because yeah, it was I, really cool. Yeah. And when I thought about the line, I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be so dope, man. <laughs> you couldn't ah, wait to gonna, launch I it. people are going to hate me for this stuff. They're going to hate me. <laughs> but, but bro, you know what's so interesting? Yeah. You, like, that in itself actually yeah. did something. Yeah. I, I think in terms of a paradigm shift because saying that made it feel cool yeah. to go to school but at the same time do music because the yeah. idea the idea back in the day especially when I entered the industry was yeah. when people were no gay walk yeah. that would like enter music yeah, you understand sure so and obviously you're from a very prestigious home right so it was the kind of thing whereby it's like okay NATO is cool yeah. you understand but then I, I want to want, school, yeah. exactly but I want to talk to you about like Storm yeah. like Storm Records and obviously your relationship with LD yeah. you know so, so how did Storm come about um Storm was, um, I mean, Storm was around prior to me, you know, even really even getting into music. So Storm mm-hmm. is Obi Asika, um, Olisa Dibwa. Um, they started Storm with, um, with, with, with my other cousin um, in Kiro, Asika. And then you have uh, Tola Odunsi as well. So mm-hmm. those, were, um, those were the people at Storm back in the day. But I mean, was spearheaded by Obi. Um, of Yasika, hmm. you know, um, at the time, even growing up as a, as a, as a, as a kid in, in boarding school in, 
Atlantic or what have you, you listen to the radio uh, when it slides out, you, know, you book set for like CD Walkman. Yeah. And you're listening to the radio and um, Oli, Olisa, you know, was that cool FM? Yeah. Right day, right you there. know, so, you know, I had no idea that, you know, I would be, you know, signed uh, to this record label, you know. Were you approached? Um, yeah, I was, yeah. So, so it's crazy. I'll try and summarize how everything happened. So, mm. so they set up this entertainment um, company back in the day. And over time, you know, um, they uh, uh, now decided to venture into like music and function as a record label, what have you. So they had Jazzman or Lofin, they had Daria Talade. Mm. Um, <clears throat> around this time uh, was when I, when I had already graduated from uh, George Washington University. Um, I was just biding my time, yeah. you know, trying to figure out what my next move was. But I already gotten into music and it was more of a hobby you know but i was just really into hip-hop culture what inspired that you know um poetry actually because um you know in secondary school i used to write really dope you know poetry because i really had this fascination with words Mm. so as a kid i always used to um go through read dictionaries and encyclopedias and uh you know magazines and stuff like that i just genuinely was interested in words Mm. you know and um so when you know the concept of you know uh poetry was introduced to me in what like maybe secondary school or what have you it was just yeah. something that i just played around with and you know the, my, my my poetry was uh was so good they posted outside the library hmm. you know hmm. you know so all that kind of stuff you know it made me feel like yeah maybe you know my my pen game is it's quite strong and um and that also coincided with the time that I got introduced to rap music because mm. in Boarding House, like all the kids, you know, like rap was the thing. You yeah. know, like I mean, I think at the time it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like you know, you know, getting familiarizing myself with rap music. But in Boarding House, a bunch of boys, mixtapes, you know, like music was the thing. It's yeah. the thing, you know. So that kind of drew me to 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 music, but rap music you know, um, specifically, and then, you know, my love for poetry, you know, and also, you know, developing a love for rap, you know, made me, you know, want to experiment in mm. terms of, you know, writing my own songs and my own lyrics, you know, so, um, so yeah, I think I started writing with a friend of mine, yeah. maybe like in a, in like a SS1, SS2 or something like that, you yeah. know, we just started writing our own lyrics and stuff. And uh, mind you, we didn't have American accents, you know, we didn't have accents at all. So, you know, and, f- and for me, being introduced to music, like, you know, the way they would deliver, the way like Bone Thugs and Harmony or, or Tupac or Biggie or, you know, all these Nas or all these other guys, was Nas actually, nah, Nas wasn't even really, what I, what I say like Nas was even popping at that time, I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway, you know, the whole idea was like, okay, you say this with an accent, like, you know, it's part of the swag. Yeah, you know, it's part yeah, of the swag. Yeah. You know, so we just do the lyrics and just be like, yeah, read this line, read this line, read this <laughs> line. Read this line. Go bad. I'm sure the raps were horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, it, you know, A for effort, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so around that time, finished, um, finished uh, um, secondary school hmm. and then, you know, I, I go to uni you know, you know, with, with with my little pen game, mm. you know, that's a little thing I do on the side, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and uh, and I and I bump into um, a Nigerian kid in my in my, in my uni in uh, New York State University of New York, Old Westbury, mm. and he's like really into like rapping, you know, yeah. like his big bro is a rapper, you know, like yeah. I'm just like okay, okay, and. It's just one of the things that you know i i was i really really loved hip-hop music mm. you know so i stuck to that and you know you know i showed him my raps and he was like okay i'm do you know how to rap i'm like not really you know it's like well this is how you have to do it this is what you call a bar this is a cadence and so i just you know just assimilating all that stuff mm. and rubbing off him and you know just putting my raps together yeah. learning how to you know deliver it and that kind of stuff and um and yeah, I mean the story goes from there, but that's the genesis of how I even stumbled into, you know, um, rap music. And that's even, that's very interesting because you know, um, everything you said right now, right? It's it's very, it's basically the foundation of your fundamentals, mm-hmm. because 
one thing I've come to realize right now mm-hmm. uh, in this day and age is a lot of people don't polish their skill sets, right? Mm-hmm. It's the kind of thing whereby, like, if you do something as a hobby, mm-hmm. right, you it's fun, right? So you mm-hmm. do it to a point and an extent at which you enjoy it. And because you enjoy it, you will think you're probably good at it to an extent, mm-hmm. which is why you do it, right? But then to sharpen your skill set is actually listen to someone that you feel is better than you, mm-hmm. develop it and work on it. And then obviously you blossom at your own time. But I think that's that's something fundamental that I've just heard just yeah. because of you talking. It's, it's really deep, to yeah. be honest. Like, I think that I think that you've scratched the surface in, in terms of, you know, like, really getting yourself, you know, submerged, you know, into something you're interested in. It's, mm. it's kind of like the Outlast concept. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like I read the book. You, um, you have to spend thousands of hours, yeah. you know, repeating the process. Yeah. Like... I'm sure you know these magazines, the source, the source. Yeah. Probably I don't know whether they still they, they still actually um, publish anymore. That's Benz, you know them. The source, yeah, the yeah. source of Double XL. Yeah, Double XL. Uh, XL. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. From maybe um, 2000, maybe like summer 2001 mm. to like uh, um, to like the end of summer 2000, and maybe six. Mm. I literally bought every single issue. I kid you not. Yeah. Every single issue of the source on Double XL, hmm. this was like my grail. Yeah. Like my go to is like my Bible. Yeah. I used to read everything in between the print, hmm. look at all the ads. <coughs> mm-hmm. You know, um, I kept every magazine. I've lost all of them now. But yeah. like, I followed the culture like intensely. To the T. To the T. Yeah. You know, so there are things that come natural to me mm. that wouldn't come natural to, to the average kid today. Percent. You know, whether I then tune in hip hop or Afrobeats or any other stuff because yeah. it's not just about, you know, honing your actual skill set. It's mm. also about your understanding of the the theoretical yeah. well no sh- sh- I won't say theoretical per se. Um I would say the um the academics of it, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Academics of it, like basically being a student. Yes, you, student, you, ha- yeah, student, yeah, you have of to the read game. certain stuff. You have like to. if you want to be an authority in whatever you're doing, yeah. you have to read. Everything isn't just oh, I just like to hear, uh, you know. And now everything is just cruise. Cruise, man. Like cruise is such a lazy word, bro. You know, cruise vibe. Those are like the laziest. I read, lazy, an, lazy, like, I read an article, right? Yeah. And apparently, yeah. I, I, this is mind boggling. Yeah. Se- um, the top two hundred songs that are currently streamed right now, yeah. right? 70% of them mm-hmm. are old music. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Like, in terms of, like, what people are listening to yeah. back to back, 70% yeah. of it is I'm not old surprised. Music. I'm not surprised at yeah. all because it's like people don't get it. Like, people want to be musicians, but they, 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 they can't even put in the time. Yeah. And they're fixated on the... Um, on, on the final product, yeah, you know, and and even just having this conversation with you reminds me of all the stuff that, you know, even if I'm to, if I was to tell a young up and coming kid, this is all you have to do to be great, just be like the long, yeah, career. yeah, you know what I'm saying, and like I did all this stuff without even wanting to be great, mm. without even wanting to be a celebrity, mm. without even I didn't want anything in exchange, yeah, I did all this stuff because I was genuinely interested in this stuff. I yeah. never planned to be you love rap or anything. You, know, mm. you understand what I'm saying? And and when you develop like that, yeah, you always stand out. Mm. So that's why Storm definitely saw what you could be. Well, I, I guess it's part of it because what happened was that we um I came back so I developed a friendship with um Ikechuku. Yeah. Um the artist, you know, um and uh, uh we were um during the time that I was closer to him and what have you, you know, he was pursuing his his uh, his career in music yeah. and what have you. I was just off the back of finishing, you know, uh, my, my my first degree at George Washington University, and mm. I was looking at possibly doing a master's. I actually was I was pre med. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. School, yeah. You know, but I figured out like I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm. Um, and I was looking, considering what I was going to do next. Yeah. And it's around that time, uh, came back to Nigeria for mm. like an Easter break or something. Yeah. Um, linked up with a cousin of mine in the east. Mm. You know, cause you know we Ebos we like to go back home. Yeah. You know, as you should. Lagos, <laughs> you know, you guys are from the, from the area. Bro, bro, <laughs> listen, man. This place is the dungeon. It's the jungle for real, for real. Yeah, but well, you know what I mean. So, yeah, without. So so head back home. Yeah. And um um I have this cousin, you know, who who um who lived in Abba. 
Mm, mm, mm. Hip hop head, whatever, you know, and it's just like, yo, this is the stuff I'm doing, you know, yeah. playing in my music, and it's like, wow, like, you guys are like really, real, like, the stuff you guys are doing is like Yankee level. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like, it just sounds like the real stuff, mm. you know? So, I was excited about it and just left the music with him, and I think we, uh, what happened? I forgot what happened, but I didn't link up with Obi mm. at the time. Obi is my big cousin. Like yeah. I see him, you know, family gatherings or what have you, but never really had the conversation about music. Yeah. So fast forward a few months later, you know, I'm in America, I'm in New York or I'm in DC or something. And, you know, I, you know, I get a call from like my, my mom or somebody like, yo, your big cousin Obi is looking for you. Mm. He seems really pressed. Mm. So I'm like, oh, looking for me? I don't know. So I call him, he's just like, yo, Nato, you won't believe what happened. I'm like, what happened? Yo, I, well, I was at the East, I went for a function or something, you know, so I'm driving back to, to town. Obi's from Onicha. Okay. So I'm, maybe he's driving back from Uma here to Onicha. He's just listening to radio and he hears this music and he hears these, these guys rapping in a not so Nigerian way. And he's just like, what is this? Mm. And then, you know, they said, um, oh yeah, yeah, music, you know, you know uh, uh, Ike Chuku, Nito Chuku, uh, that's, that used to be my rap name, Nito, Nito Chuku. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, Cause they couldn't pronounce Nato Chuko, so it's Nato Chuko. Nato Chuko. Yeah, 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 yeah. My 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 New York friends, you say Nato Chuko. So whatever your name is, bro, it's Nato Chuko. You know. So yeah, you know. So um, so yeah, I was like, man, like, dude, is this what you're doing? I'm mm. like, oh yeah. He said, I look, man, I want to sign you guys. Word. You guys, because at that point in time, he was trying to build the mm. record label. So yeah. He needed, you know talent and and that product you know because he's a visionary so yeah. he had his own idea of what he wanted to do mm. so i tell the kids like look oh, my cousin my big cousin you know um just called me blah 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 you know so i'll um i'll put you uh what you call it i will do a three-way you yeah. know just chop it up with him so mm. he can let you know you know what he has in mind you yeah know? So, I mean, at the time, Ikechuku, you know, had this thing called World Famous Academy. Yeah. And he was much older than I. He's much older than I. Yeah. You know, he, he has a brother called Uzi. Yeah. So, you know, it was just like, uh, okay, let's come together and do, I uh, have like a little crew, World mm. Famous Academy, freestyle. So, just like a thing. And maybe yeah. like a label and maybe he'd sign me and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, movement. that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm. that kind of stuff, you know. So, and I, I didn't, I mean, I was in the background of like, I didn't have any aspirations to actually do music. So Fair. I just let him drive the conversation. I was yeah. like, bro, I just roll with you. Mm, <laughs> I just mm, in the back mm, of the car, mm, just roll with you. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens, you know. Meanwhile, I still have to go out and do my stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm still in school. <laughs> no, by the time I was in school, I, I'd finished, I graduated, I graduated in 2004. So this no, was, was loading. in between. School was loading. Oh, I was wow. trying to make a decision. Mm. Am I going to do master's in uh, in a different subject since, since I'm not doing med school anymore? Mm. What am I going to do? Anyway, so we shall, um, shall come back to NIH. You know, um, they introduce us to like, you know, the music that they have going on, what they want to do, all that stuff. And, you know, at the time, like, I just, we just felt like cooler than everybody else. Yeah. You know, As it, yeah. you just felt like so superior, mm. you know, like, we're just cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like, I just, like, listen to a bunch of people, like, what, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, what is this? No, no disrespect. Of but course. I was disconnected to, yeah. to like, Niger music. You yeah. Know? And then, you know, people were trying to do, like, Western Western music, you know, just like, you're doing it wrong. wrong yeah. That's not how to do it, mm. you know what I mean? That's like, I was pretty much judgmental, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's cool. Yeah, um, yeah so, so yeah, so, so that's how we, we, we linked up with Storm, and, um, and yeah, you know, the story goes on from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, I mean, how I got to find out about you, yeah. bro, I think I was in secondary school. I think I, I can't remember what class, but yeah. Kenny Big Dude was ringing off like yeah. constantly to the point yeah. that bro, I got your album. Yeah. Ringtone was my jam. Like yeah. you understand? Ringtone was a nice. Sense. Yeah, yeah, that it's was that was my nice vibe. Sense. So Kenny yeah. Big Dude, let, let's talk about that record because yeah. I mean, a lot of things people still say actually comes from you. Like even P. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. like P was the P. Was the P. God, you're too now much. Yeah. <laughs> now they're um, pushing P. Push now. Is oh, can you imagine, yeah. bro? So how how ahead have you been? For me, it's just like when when, when I see this stuff, you know, it just it makes me smile. Yeah. You know? Um, 
yeah, you know, I talk to people, they're like, oh, yes, boss. Like, <laughs> yes, they're, boss. they're itching to just tell me yes, boss. <laughs> 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 like, yes, boss. <laughs> Yo, it's um, the gratification, you know, for setting, you know, like, I won't, I don't even know if, it, if it's even a trend because, mm. you know, trends come and go. Yeah. You know, but people have been speaking the same way for more than 10 years. Yeah, yeah. It you shows, know, it shows so you've done something that is I real. think, I think it's cultural now. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I, I think they're trends and they're just like cultural staples. Mm, 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 you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, like timestamps, basically. Yeah, timestamps. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then maybe at a point in time, maybe yes, boss will no longer be as cool or maybe it's just always going to be like a yes, boss thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think it's more about. I don't know. The way I see it is kind of like this, right? Um, you know how um, the Oyembos came here and said they yeah. discovered Africa, yeah. right? But Africa has always been here, right? Yeah. It's similar. So, yes, boss has always been there, but you are the one that, like, has... Yeah, made it cool. Yeah, basically. It's, 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 yeah, but it's eponics now. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like how, you know, um, an African-American... Well, not in, in hip-hop culture, I mean. Yeah. Um, and in this, to a sense, to a degree, like in African-American culture. Yeah. How, you know, certain words... You know, I extracted them. They, they flip. Yeah, you know, yeah. Flip yeah. meaning of something. Yeah, and you make it cool because it's even the same thing with the P. Like till today, who knows what the P exactly, is? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know I, think, I, mean? I think fundamentally that's how languages yeah become. You yeah, know, a thing. You know, because even the English we speak now yeah. is is from Latin, right? Yeah, Latin is from Greek. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's just the trickle down effect of yeah. how human beings have managed to create words. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. words evolve, evolve, which is which is crazy too, yeah. because you know, um, I I don't think that in the next um, in the next what like fifty years, mm. the, the the Webster dictionary that we're using like fifty years ago, I think like next fifty years, it's change. Century, it's, it's gonna change. It's gonna change. That's crazy. Yo, what's crazy? They might put P in. <laughs> <laughs> they might put P. They might put yes, boss. <laughs> so, so let me now ask you a question. Is it, is it that? Because <coughs> Kini, Kini Big Do yeah mm-hmm. was just big for so many reasons, right? Yeah. But for me, for you guys to make that a focus track, mm-hmm. was it that obvious to you guys that yo? This it was is obvious to me. It wasn't you guys. It oh, okay. So let's let's <laughs> just point of clarification. All right. Sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> they like the like vision. <laughs> yeah. What happened? I was um. So I give you a little bit of you know backstory. Too. Yeah. So at the time, um, Ikechuku introduced me to uh, uh, the band and the rest of Mohe. Mm, mm. So um, they used to live in Otelai Estate. Do you know what Otelai Estate is? Where? Probably don't worry, you know. Mainland. Yeah, mainland. Okay, that would not know for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like um so anyway, you know, <clears throat> they used to live there mm. and um so we go to the house. Yeah. Mind you, I've always been like a shy person. Mm. You know, so <clears throat> I'm just usually in the back. Yeah. You know, so we go to the house, um and you know, listen to that's what artists do. You listen to each other's music. Yeah. I don't know if artists are doing that now, but I know like maybe sure, like, yeah, they do. you know, like back in the day, like mm. you, you play your shit, I play my shit, yeah. you know. And so yeah, so they play their stuff, you mm. know, or maybe we play our stuff first yeah. and then our stuff was just like New York <laughs> rap, hip hop, fitted cap, yeah. And rap, <laughs> you know, like yeah, you know, um Sean John. Mm. You know, G U, you know what I mean, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Rock Aware, mm, mm. the Do Rag, yeah. you know the match, the matching teams of football mm. is kind of old there, but oh, the matching teams, <laughs> Jordans, yeah. you know, um, Dipset. Like yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. these. I'm just trying to take you back to an era. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's your era. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we're dropping the jams there, mm. everybody's like. Uh, this one and you were on the mainland again and, 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 yeah, look, we were in the crew yeah, yeah so that's what I'm saying yeah, so, so, went to their coming down. so there were a lot of disconnects oh, yeah, yeah. there were a lot of disconnects because where we were coming from wasn't where they were yeah you know so but the friendship was pr- predominantly between Ikechuku and and uh, the band, and Dapo, the band yeah. you know and then you know Ikechuku was a really friendly person so yeah. He was really friends with them mm. before I came. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not that socially equipped. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> You're doing better so, now. <laughs> yeah, we're much better now. We're better now. But anyway, so, you know, they hear our jams, you know. Yeah. And when you play your channel, just like checking other people's reaction. And I just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't get it, you don't get it, which is yeah, still cool. Yeah. You know. And then when they play their records, like it's pandemonium. <laughs> like, I, somebody I didn't get it. Somebody's doing a backflip in the background. 
making noises <laughs> and all this kind of stuff and it just made you like, yeah, like what am I crazy <laughs> what you know so yeah. I was just like something is I miss here. yeah yeah <clears throat> now it's really important to pay attention mm. so i've been paying attention to this stuff and i've been paying attention i was comparing yeah because like remember i told you when i first came like i used to i was very judgmental about music like, yeah i was disconnected yeah but i started paying attention and started seeing that come on there's something that i need to kind of connect with mm. but i couldn't figure it out yet yeah so um uh or, or what do you call it um i'm trying to remember so I, I, yeah, I did. You know my pee. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, my yeah, pee yeah. was super fresh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Super fresh, you know. Um, melodic, what have you. Yeah. So, you know, I know his guys came, supported the video. Um, I remember they flew in a watch from Abuja. A watch? Yeah, they flew in a watch. They came with the watch for me wow. to wear the watch Abuja on Polo. Wow. Yeah, so it was a big thing. Yeah. We weren't doing that kind of stuff in Nigeria. No, then, especially then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're flying the watch up, which that's like major. Yeah. Nobody was doing that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, just to let you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, you've been, you've been pushing you know, me. Where this, where this stuff started from, really. <laughs> yeah, you know, for real, Nobody for real. was doing that. Yeah. Talking about, I won't even go too deep, but, <laughs> you know, nobody was doing none of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Even the stuff we were talking about, nobody's even talking about mm. it. We don't even get it now. Yeah. But anyway, so... Yeah, so we do we do that, and you know it's a cool song, you know. Yeah. And I'm performing, you know, and when I perform, like people, it's crazy because people just the ensemble they're excited. Mm. The music they're not really paying attention, but you know, music is music. It sounds okay, it sounds okay. Yeah. But I'm also seeing the difference when the local guys come, come on stage. On. So I'm just yeah. like, hmm, there's something I need to figure out. But I kept it to myself, mm. so it wasn't stuff like I was even telling Nikki Chupo. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And then. Um, I think Ikichuku did wind down well or something. Yeah. Smash. I'm hearing, I was hearing what's going on. So mm -hmm. I just like, my album is supposed to be ready. Yeah. And um, I tell him that, nah, I need a few more songs. I need a few more songs. It's not ready because mm. I knew I, I couldn't connect. Yeah. As it was. Yeah. So I go back into the studio with TY Mix. Um, that, that particular day, we had like a rubbish session. Mm. We had an early session. Mm. So, so around like maybe like one, one two o'clock yeah we go to um, um darius had a day his wife was doing something in the house mm. in abuja yeah so we go there shout um, out diola yeah shout out yeah. diola and Dari. Yeah, Dari too. yeah i saw them this weekend still yeah so we, we go to um we go to to to, to, to their the house you know maybe spend like an hour have something to eat she was like man bro let's um let's go back to the studio, mm. go back to the studio. i'm like all right no problem even the way just it's like the studio run back in it back in it it was legendary wow like i have to go to his house to pick it. like sometimes he doesn't even want to record mm. like to record the desire yeah was it's crazy mm. I, I need to go back to some of these memories actually anyway so we we um we get to the studio it doesn't take long he starts doing you know to, to just start doing you know the the the, the, the pattern for yeah what would become king a big deal hmm. i'm like do it like this do it like that okay do it like this do it like that da, da, da. before you know before six we have the beat i'm hmm. just like wow this beat is so magnificent yeah it's, it's like it's 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 like something's about to happen yeah all right hmm. then, let me hold the beat you know hmm. I'll, I'll get back to you I'll, I'll get back to you you know so i'm working on the beat working on the beat you know listening to the beat over and over yeah trying to figure out put my ideas <laughs> together um, I remember that period. Um, uh, Mohis there, there in Abuja, so they came to came to Maui Ikechuku, what have you? Yeah. I think I played the beat for Donja, Donjazi and Ikechuku. The first thing Ikechuku said, "Yo, let me have that beat." I'm like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> you know, I'm like, "No, why would I give my beat?" <laughs> you know. And then I held the beat, you know, um, and yeah. Then I went to this, went to the studio, did the did the, um, the 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 chorus yeah and mind you before before Kenny Big Deal yeah, yeah. I've been doing songs for I've been producing songs for storm artists like uh, GT GT the guitar man mm. Alai mm. Sasha P yeah and one thing I was doing with them was I was toying around with my songwriting on how to like use local Yoruba 
broken English to try and like connect with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've been doing that. So it was already at the back of my head. Mm. So by the time I was doing Kenny Baker, it was like maybe like a year later. Okay. I'd already been doing this stuff in my mind, playing with words and phonics and how to make how to make it sound cool. Yeah. How to, that's so, connect. So that's why I was like, 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 yeah. like, I'm in Abuja. So mm. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Kenny yeah, Big yeah. Deal, Kenny, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and uh, yeah, so it's crazy because like this same thing I was talking about, like this whole outlast concept. Yeah. You do something over and over, yeah, you never know when you're gonna need it. Yeah. You know transferable so, skills. So when so so when the time but more specifically, mm. playing with a certain type of writing style. Mm, yeah, yeah. You yeah, understand? Yeah. So yeah. when the time came, I was able to do something I hadn't done before because mm. I've been practicing all this while. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And um yeah, that's how the song came. When the song came, hmm. I was like, "This is the song," hmm. because I was confident that there wasn't any record that could that could touch this record. Yeah, you know. And um, so I remember going back to Lagos, and I'm like, "Yo, guys, this is the song." They're like, "Ah, uh, I don't know. You haven't had another song called Carry Your Shoulder." Yeah, you know. And a lot of these these records were experimental because, mm. you know, I was doing stuff I hadn't done before. Yeah, and I was doing stuff that. The, the audience hadn't really heard before yeah you know so you know so it was um but i kind of knew exactly what i wanted and mm. what i wanted was in kini big deal mm. so they're like no well i think no they were trying to talk me out of it i was like nope this is the record yeah no 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 and then after some time just like man if he says that's record he record if he feels he feels he feels. Like, he's, he's not his career <laughs> that kind of stuff yeah know? so we shot the video just it was just magic all through. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's still magic now. Till today. You know. Now, for sure. For sure. That's mad interesting, man. Yeah. Yo, I'm, I'm actually giving you all the dubs, man. I bro, know, like... I've never been this detailed. You know, I mean, first of all, I remember, of remember when I messaged you, I said, yeah. bro, I don't take this for granted at Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but for me, the good thing is that sometimes when you have these opportunities, yeah. you know, just, you know, maybe, you know, giving a little bit more detail is good because... You never know how much um, positivity that can create. Most and and you bro, know. it's it's the premise for this. I'll I'll give yeah. you like a, a short story. So um, yeah. those time I I had the privilege of being at JJC's house. Right? Yeah, yeah, JJC skills, and then um he was playing me his new artist. Right, he was just playing yeah. me his records, and then we just started talking, and he started telling me his story. Right, and I didn't realize that he was actually one of the first people to interact with labels like mm -hmm. because he was in a group called big brothers right and yeah, they yeah. had a deal and all these things so as he was talking i just started thinking to myself if this type of information was made public mm -hmm. so many people would have known not what to do because mm -hmm. bro people are in terrible deals now regardless of how like good the industry is now yeah you're right yeah you're so right. so it's, it's the promise for this yeah you're right you're right so l let me now ask you a question because obviously you got so big and then yeah yeah why did you stop music mm, well at a at the at a point in time especially when i got married before i got married mm. i was i started becoming more conscious about what would life after music look like yeah you know because at this point you've probably seen a lot <clears throat> yeah i've seen a lot mm. you know even before music i've seen a lot already. <laughs> so you know i've been thinking what would life after music look like and one thing that i knew was that I wanted to be in control over um, life after music. Mm. You know, I wanted to, you know, take full responsibility. I didn't want to be. Um, I didn't want to leave, leave my future, in, you know, to the hands of another person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and yeah, you, when you when you get married, you start a family. Like mm. you're responsible. You have to be responsible. Yeah. You know, so it's not like oh yeah, there's nobody to blame. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I analyzed, I looked at where things were going. Yeah. Um, where things, where the industry was going. Yeah. Um, and I had to make a decision on what was m most important to me. Yeah. You know, as a person in my personal life. Yeah. You know. Um, and yeah, so I, was, so I decided to start working on life hmm. after music early. Which is which is l real life. And yeah, real yeah. life. Mm. Real life. You see, the thing is, the thing is that, um, you know, we're like athletes, yeah? Yeah. You're a footballer for time. Maybe mm. if you have an illustrious career, maybe you're a footballer to like 40. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, at 40, maybe you get injured or you just retire. Yeah. You know, you, you don't know any other thing about football. Yeah. 
So you're gonna have to start learning business at 40, yeah. learning investing, you know. Um, and it's crazy, you know, with business, yeah, a lot of, uh, a huge part of business is, um, and success in business is failure. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I always looked at it that, look, if I'm gonna fail, I need to start failing early. At least fail forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fail forward, fail early, whichever yeah. way you wanna put it. Yeah. You know? I couldn't afford to start my life, you know, in my 40s. Mm, facts. Yeah, I couldn't afford to. It was too too risky for me to to attempt. Yeah. You know, especially knowing the kind of life that I wanted. What brought this? Because, bro, like, what you're saying is very profound. Because, mm-hmm. okay, I'll, I'll give an example, right? You use the word responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. And that word for me has become, like, last year has become very important because that is actually what life is about. <coughs> so I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. I... Like, when I go online, I see a lot of people talk about rights, you know, different types of rights, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's, you know, black rights, LGBT rights, women's rights, mm-hmm. ETC rights. But then you talk about rights, but you can't talk about rights without responsibility because somebody's right is somebody else's responsibility. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Your right to have an easy living in your country is the responsibility of your government, you know? Yeah. So so you can't talk about one without the other, but there's more focus on one than the other. And it's very profound to me that you are, sp- like, very early you realize that, yo, I need to be responsible because, like, that's the meaning of carrying your cross, isn't it? Like, the, mm-hmm. as yeah. much responsibility as you can put on yourself yeah. is as much as you should do because yeah. that is how you become who you are meant to be in life, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so what? The same way. Yeah. What what brought that awakening? Um, you know, there's something that you you, you missed out. You, you spoke about responsibility mm-hmm. and you spoke about rights. Yeah. But not th- one thing you didn't speak about is freedom. Hmm. Um, for you to have rights, you have to be free. Yeah. You know, and even even if you're not well, to, technically, for you to have rights, you have to be free. Yeah. For you to um take full advantage of your rights you have to have some level of freedom Freedom, yeah all right um responsibility is a personal thing yeah you know like um owning up taking charge or what have you is down to your character yeah you know there are people who are much older than i am who are not responsible people because it's their character Mm. you feel me um everything that we kind of like do like when we work hard uh, we want to make money. We want to be successful. We're really just doing it for freedom. Yeah. We're at the really, end of the day. At the end of the day, we're really just doing it for freedom. Yeah. But freedom comes with great responsibility. Facts. You feel me? Facts. So the the, the, the more freedom you get, the more responsible you have to mm, be. Mm. You know, at an early stage in my career, I started to get a certain level of freedom. Yeah. And it also meant that I needed to be very more responsible if I wanted to have a certain type of life. Yeah. Okay. Um Damn, that's very and, yeah. and um for me, um I didn't really have contrary to, to, to what, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, how how how, you know, people online tried to frame my narrative. Hmm. Like I was, you know, just super privileged guy. Yeah. You know, who has this huge safety net, hmm. who doesn't have to do much. Who, whose career was bought for him and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Contrary to 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 to, to that um, narrative or what have you. Yeah. It's um, like I don't really at my age, you know, like I don't have that. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, of course. Yeah. Like my, my old man is 82. Yeah. My mom is in the 70s. Yeah. They can't catch a, you know they can't carry a a a, 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 a man like me exactly. in a family. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. And that had never even been like my kind of persona anyway. Yeah. Which is the reason why I was able to take my music career and turn it into something. Yeah. That I could stand on even till today. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I have to be responsible yeah. for my life decisions mm-hmm. because I'm looking after my family. One thousand percent. No other person is doing that. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. If I don't make money today, nobody's gonna give me any handouts. Facts. And funny enough, it's even more difficult for people like me because, you know, on the outside people are like, Yeah, but you have everything. Hmm. You know, so nobody's nobody nobody is going to wants to even help me. You yeah, because like oh, Nito is okay, he's fine. If anything, they want to do better than I am. Mm. Do better than what I'm doing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's how crazy it is. The yeah. world outside is, you know. Yeah. So we don't have any hands handouts. We have to create our own luck. Yeah, you know, there's so much to achieve great things in life. There's so much 
us as, a, as individuals have to achieve ourselves yeah you feel me yeah no if you want to be a person of value mm. yeah no one is going to give you the cheat code nobody you're going to have to do whatever you have to do to be a person of value yeah. a person of value opportunities will always present themselves Facts to you. you know so a lot of all this stuff is how i was thinking at that time yeah you feel me yeah so i looked at it i'm like to be honest if i really want to do um excel as a musician or what have you i'm going to need to make certain sacrifices yeah if i want to prioritize starting a family the way I want to start my family, yeah. I'm going to have to make certain sacrifices. 1,000%. What is most important at this time? Mm. And which sacrifices am I willing to make? Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, I've had colleagues tell me that, look, Nito, you know, the reason why, you know, your career, you know, is the way it is, mm. you know, is because you're not c controversial. And, you know, if, if, if you want to be, like, big and huge and blah, 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 you know, you know you're gonna have to be controversial, and and and, and I, I haven't said this story publicly, yeah. but because the guy telling me is, is my boy, of you know, forever, you know, just He's looking like, out, just like look, why do you think, why do you think all the big artists have baby mamas? <laughs> why do you think all the big artists in Nigeria have baby mamas? It's crazy. That's what he's telling me. Yeah, he's like, okay, okay, I even take it a step for, further. Why do you think so, so and so just started smoking weed? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think you have to stop? How, haven't you been on Snapchat? <laughs> haven't you seen how he's smoking the weed? <laughs> what a Yo, it's a comedy show, bro. Yeah. Like, like this is what someone and the thing about it sometimes, you know, in our in our in our humility, people yeah. forget who we are. Facts. You know, so this someone saying all this stuff to me, and I'm looking at him, and unfortunately, you know, that's how limit. Li that's how limited his own thinking and reasoning is. is. Yeah. You feel me? He's because confined to what he can only see. Yeah. yeah. And and I can't even blame him Facts. because that's his reality. Yeah. You know, that's his reality. It's like, look, dude, if you want to blow, like, you know. You guys do. And, 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 and you telling me if I want to blow, like, I've gone, like, the conversation with me has never even been about blowing. <sighs> you know what I mean? Never even been about blowing. Like, I think, you know, not even I think. I've done stuff that you know, I'm extremely proud of. Yeah. You know, extremely content. You know, um, content content when I think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? My thing has never even really been about blowing. Yeah. You know, or and what is what's that? Well, what is that? Yeah. You know what, I'm what is that? Is it um is it like touring yeah around the world? Because I've done that before. Yeah. You know, if if in fact in fact if I remember when uh when I was when I was touring America at the time um, I did Canada. I did like ten dates in Canada. Yeah. I did like fourteen dates in in in, in the U.S. Like nobody was doing that. Yeah. You know, nobody mm. was doing that. Like, and your passport like, allowed you. Like in in London, like London, like early times. I did like what, like fourteen dates in London. Mm. You know, South Africa. You know, was, I even became more. Um, I became popular in South Africa before even in Nigeria. Mm. You mm. know, so I yeah. had a very fulfilled career. To yeah. be honest, you know what I mean. Um, but I think that from the from the outside, you know, um, maybe when someone, so s people may not really know, you know, the extent of how far you you might have gone. Because yeah. remember, we come from a time where um, there wasn't social media. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, we come from a time there wasn't social media. Sometimes people in the past people have been like surprised at how is this guy so popular yeah you know i've been everywhere mm. you know i have fans everywhere yeah you know but because of social media i guess you didn't see that mm. you know so i guess in hindsight you know i think when i had this conversation you know um i think it was more so a thing of uh well you know if you want to um get your career to a certain stage you know um you're gonna have to be more controversial and that kind of stuff. Terrible advice yeah. anyway. But um but yeah, you know, so in summation, you know, I I, I know yeah, you know, if I wanted to take my career a certain way, I yeah. would have had to make certain sacrifices. Yeah. And those were not sacrifices that that I was but willing to take. Yeah. Nah, not at all. <laughs> I mean, bro, at least everything turned out well. Thank God. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you 
just a few questions obviously the current state of the industry like you just said yeah. there's now social media the streaming there's yeah. just so much more in comparison um what do you think about that and the second question i would ask is who are you feeling in this new space if you're even paying attention to it so the first question again is that the current state of like where music is yeah no 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 not just music let, let me be more specific what do you feel about the, the landscape of like how afrobeat has like you know moved across borders you know how it's easier to do business now like what's just your general thoughts about it like obviously the structure is there for people to use but the way it's being used, the way it's happening, like what what do you think? Do you think it could be better? Do you think there could be more structure? Like what do you think? What's your opinion on it? Well, it could always be better. Mm. You know, it's still Afro beats is still like a, a young genre. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that as it, you know, continues to evolve, it will get more developed. Yeah. Um and more professionals come into the fray of things yeah. and you know, help putting structures in place that will work yeah and that will actually work in favor of of the artists yeah of the of of of, of the managers of the businesses yeah you know as opposed to the um the big labels who are coming to like exploit yeah you know talent yeah in nigeria and and, and get rich off yeah. the numbers that we have you yeah. know so i think it'll take a nice it's, it's natural progression yeah you know um so i'm not even worried about that i think it's fantastic to 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 hear um artists you know um nigerian artists work with like the biggest of them all like this is the kind of stuff that you know um a couple of years ago i used to dream about mm. because it was like you know how would this person sound with this and how would that person sound with this and you know there was a time when nigerians used to pay for features yeah and, i remember those times and make crappy songs yeah and the songs just the songs the song is just waste like, of money. The song is like it's just dis disjointed. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. And 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 but this is my own personal opinion. Yeah. Mine know, too. I share my own personal opinion. You know when we used to pay for features, like now that I don't know whether people are paying for features like that, but no. the quality of 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 like international collaborations is a lot better. Yeah. than what it used to be before. Definitely. You know. I also think because the quality of music coming out of Africa is also better as well. Well, let, let me not say better, but more um, relatable. I think that, I think that, you know, um, I think that when, you know, a Nigerian artist felt like, oh, I need to pay for a feature so that I'll look bigger mm. or so that I can, so, you know, so I can appear bigger or yeah. what have you. I think that's the wrong ideology to, 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 uh, to, to, to go by, yeah. you know, and I just don't think that it ever really, you know, from an organic point of view, I don't think it's ever really been like oh a classic. Yeah. I don't think any of those records have really been like A one. Yeah. You feel me? Facts. It's like I think like now, yeah, we have A one records, yeah. you know, we have uh Whiskey, Beyonce. Yeah. You know, we yeah. have um we have um we have uh Wiz and um and Thames. Yeah. Um we have uh we have you know, um, I'm trying bunch. to think. Of, I think Fireboy, uh, Madonna. I haven't heard that record. It's before. Madonna's record, yeah. I haven't heard that record, but yeah. <coughs> we have powerful artists. We man. do like mm -hmm. Wiz, you know, Burner, yeah. Thames, David, you yeah. know, like powerful artists. Yeah, you know that can get the job done. Yeah, you know, there wasn't. I mean, when I think about it, like, yeah, I mean, in my time, yeah, we had good artists as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we had. Artists. There was a lot of excitement during your time. Yeah, there was. was there was, and, and you know what? I think that under the right circumstances, you know, possibly the same. What's going on now could have happened then, but yeah. certain things just weren't in place. You know, certain that. conversations yeah. couldn't um, couldn't have taken place, and you know, the level of respect yeah. just wasn't there. Yeah. Like now, I think that the level of respect is there, mm -hmm. and, and it also shows when. You're, you're doing a collaboration you know yeah. when someone isn't really you know they don't have that level of respect they're probably not going to give you like their best version definitely their not best verse yeah you know what i mean like i feel like what's someone's like oh i, I need to i, I need respect to this through. artist now yeah I need to come through you yeah know what i mean i think that they will give you a strong yeah. verse you know what yeah. i mean but um 
but I mean, either which way, you know, things are things are great. Mm -hmm. Can only can only get better. Yeah, you know, um, I'm a big fan of you know like most of most of like the new talent now um, doing their thing. Mm. Um, I mean, like Wiz, you know, I met Wiz long time ago. Mm. You know, long long time ago. Mm. You know, and uh, I mean, up until you know he became a a mega superstar. You <laughs> yeah, know? still used to you know. Uh, touch base with him or what have you I'm just happy to see his career get to where it's where it's at and, yeah. and where it's gonna go mm. you know um, same with David David's my little bro you know I've known mm. David a long time yeah. you know I your take, cousin manages him yeah mm -hmm. I take David as family um, Burner yeah Burner same yeah. you know it's my little bro too you know He's a crazy guy. <laughs> but, uh, he's a crazy guy. I'm actually looking forward to bumping it. Yeah, again. Yeah. Asking why he's so crazy. <laughs> why, why, why you got all this money? You still fucking crazy, bro. You know, Shout out, brother. You know, that's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Super talented. Yeah, you know. Um, who else? Um, other others. You know, like Ten. I've met Ten before. Yeah. But you know, fantastic artist. You know, um, super, so super artist. Yeah. Um, who else do we have? Fireboy, Fire Boy, yeah. Crazy, yeah. Um, um, Joe Boy. Yeah, I've, 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 I did like a little project with him. They they remixed, um, they remixed one record that I did with, with Joe Boy record. I didn't really like it, but you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, but, you know. Um, but yeah, Joe Boy, fantastic. Yeah. Artist. Um, we got Rema. I love Rema. I love Rema. I love Rema. I love Rema. His Rema. energy, bro. Oh, I love it. He's just, he's just so weird, you know. You it's, know, you know what? Vibe. Anytime I see him, it's like yeah. you've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been like here before. A, a kindred spirit. <laughs> I've I, I met yeah. him only once, yeah. And yeah. It's so funny because the energy I felt, it was just a brief conversation, nothing even too hectic. <coughs> I was sitting down with Thames and he comes over with yeah. Shaney and you know just yeah. the formal introduction. Yeah. And you know, very cool, very calm, yeah. quiet, yeah, yeah. and left. But then when I see him on my phone, it's like, yeah. yo, is this the same guy? Yeah. So I, I spoke to Paul, Laddie Paul yeah. about him and he's like, Yo, if you guys speak like yeah. proper, you get it. Like yeah. he's like you. You yeah. know. Crazy. So, yeah. I just remember who else um and this is funny. Um I met I met Adikole Gold a long time ago. Oh, that's like my guy. Briefly, yeah. But I, I seen him perform this weekend mm. and I saw my wife say, you know what's crazy? I met a different girl. I haven't met AG, AG, AG Baby. AG <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Nah, bro. Yeah. AG Baby went to LA and never nah. came back. <laughs> AG Baby, Baby is, uh, he's, um, nah, it's, you know, like, I, 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 I just love where Nigerian music is. Yeah. I'm even trying to remember that so, so many other cool artists, um, Oh, um, Ashake Abi. Yeah. Oh, um, Ashake. Ashake. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard the guy is mad talented. Bro, I heard bro. he's been around for a long time. Yeah, he has. He has. Yeah, and he's he's on fire. Yeah. You know. Um, and yeah, man. Like there's just so many. I can't remember all of them, but because I don't actually actively listen to music. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't listen to music in my car. What do you listen to? Nothing. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just your thoughts. Just my thoughts, bro. Fair enough, it's bro. You choke already, so no need wild. to clutter it with more noise. Wild, wild, wild. Uh, you know, but yeah, yeah I, I love the direction. Yeah, know, man. That's good. Going. That's good. Ah, bro. Okay, so I'm going to end it off with a story that I don't even yeah. know if you remember. But yeah. for me, this story is what actually made me put you close to my heart, right? Yeah. So, bro, this was like my upper coming days. Because you saw me like you saw me when I was a rat, basically, right? And... I didn't, I didn't think you were a rap, bro. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's what, so that's what I'm getting to. So for me, yeah, yeah, obviously, I'm up and coming this thing. I'm learning so much from, you know, all my peers. Yeah. But then there was a time we were going out, bro. Yeah. We had some rocks at some club, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we fairly just met. And everybody had zoomed off, right? But then as I was about to zoom off, my car entered the gutter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember this? I've, well, I remember your car entered the gutter and did you message me i didn't message you bro you like you were in front of me yeah but for some reason you it's like you are looking back okay and then you reversed yeah and then you were like ah, bro what's up i said yeah. bro my my car is in this yeah. thing so you picked me yeah and you drove me to like the towing place okay then got a tow truck yeah, tow and, truck and bro yeah. because basically if not for like everyone yeah. had gone yeah and i think at this point in time funny enough my phone had died Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's have been a long night for me. Wow. So when I saw that your daughter said, ah, "You need to stop 
to help me and nobody. I'm yeah. like, nah, this this is somebody I need to hold forever. And now you're doing my podcast and I'm no yeah. longer a rat. Nah, you're not a rat by any, any <laughs> standard, you know. But I mean for for me, you know, at the end of the day, you know, yeah. so I, I think that I think that sometimes, you know, the way we when you take yourself too seriously sometimes, yeah. you know, um, it kind of prevents you from doing good. Yeah. You know, uh, because you now create like this artificial barrier around you, what you can do, what you can't do, yeah. and that kind of stuff. And it takes away from, you know, from being human sometimes, you know, Fact. which is one of the things that I didn't really, you know, I didn't really find exciting about being like a celebrity and mm. having all these restrictions and stuff like that. And, and, and you know, freedom is a good thing can be a good thing can be a bad thing you yeah. know when you have the opportunity opportunity to be free yeah you know you you can um you could do stuff like what i did yeah you know like i was driving myself you know yeah. i don't have to go with like a bodyguard yeah. or i don't have to go to entourage yeah. you know, that kind of stuff because i'm free yeah you know even on my bro you've done so much yeah. you've done a lot for me even on my birthday last yeah. year you one we went out oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> That was random. Yeah, random was, as well. Yeah, but that was a nice night. Yeah, it was that fun. Was nice night, the club wasn't too know. packed. Like, yeah. our people were there. It was a yeah, vibe. it was a red night because I don't even really enjoy going out. Yeah. yeah so it was a red night. Nah, what those ones that might not I don't know, I know. Bro. Right. But me, I always appreciate it, bro. Nah, nah, nah it's good. It's good. I appreciate it, too. Yeah, man. Well, we've basically been here for almost an hour. So, Nato, thank you so much for... Thanks for having me. I'm yeah, happy yeah. to finally do this for you. Yeah, thank you so much. And I hope, you know, you know podcast continues to do well thank you get thank amazing you. um amazing interviews and you yeah. know just share 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 the knowledge you know yeah. and you know i hope that you know uplifts people yeah, man. people can actually pick on the right things mm. you know to run with and yeah. you know let it do better for themselves facts because because for me that's what's really important and i think you know you know when you start something from a genuine genuinely good place yeah. i think that you know the rest will you know fall falls mm-hmm. in place you know Thanks. So I wish you the best, bro. Thank you so much, broski. We out. <laughs> Peace.